إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات ربي وسلام عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the heavens and the earths, and we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I remind myself and I remind you as Allah azza wa jal reminds us in His holy book, O you who believe, be God conscious of Allah, to not die except in the state of Islam, to not die except in the state of submission. My brothers, since the very beginning of time, since the very beginning of the creation of man, we have been at war, at war with a sworn enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in multiple places in the Quran, He reminds the human being that, O oh human being, O oh son of man, shaitan, Iblis is your enemy, so therefore take him as an enemy. So much so, so severe is this animosity of shaitan with the human being, that from the moment you are created, there's a very nice narration that says that the first thing, you know, ever watched a child come into this world, the first thing he does is he cries. And there is a narration that says that is because shaitan waits for the baby to be born. And then he pricks him, he stabs him until he makes him cry. So imagine the moment that I came out of my mother, shaitan was waiting there waiting there to declare his war with me and remind me that I am your enemy until the very last moment of your life. Guess who will also be there waiting? The same enemy. Abdullah ibn al-Imam Ahmad radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He says, I was there when my father was dying. Imam, imagine Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, one of the great Imams of this, of this ummah. So Abdullah, his son, he narrates he narrates the story and he says, I was there when my father was dying. And he says, and he was laying there on the bed and he was going through this, what they call Sakarat al maut the last moments of life. You know, he's in and out of consciousness. He says, and as my father gained consciousness, he says, la ba'd, la ba'd, no, not yet, no, not yet. So Abdullah says, you know, I'm, he says, I was curious that why is my father saying, no, not yet? Doesn't he want to die? Is he afraid of death? He says, and then my father, he lost consciousness. He says, so I waited there and I was anxious and I was worried. He said, until I waited, until my father, he gained consciousness again. And therefore I asked him, I said to my father, why were you saying no, not yet? Don't you want to die? And then, and then Imam Ahmad, he says to his son, Abdullah, he says to him, no, my son, I did not say no, not yet, because I didn't want to die. I said no, not yet, because shaitan was standing in front of me and he was biting on his fingernails and he was telling me, Oh, Ahmed, you have slipped out of my hands. Ahmed, you've slipped out of my hands. So therefore I replied and I said to him, no, not yet. Not until I'm dead and gone is the war over between you and I. So if from the very moment I was born, shaitan is there. And at the very last moment of my life, shaitan is there. And he's there and his oath and his promise to Allah is to show that I will be ungrateful. To try and distract me and take me away from Allah Azza wa Jal. And one of the biggest tricks of shaitan is to belittle any good that you do. This is one of the traps and the tricks of shaitan is to belittle any good that you can do. And you find Allahu Akbar, an amazing chapter in Riyadh al-Salihin about numerous ways of doing good. You see, we live in a time now where unfortunately, let's take boxing for instance as a sport. You know, everyone likes to think of himself as this heavyweight puncher, this boxer that's going to knock out his opponent with that heavy right hook. And so therefore any other punch other than the right hook, unfortunately, even, even within ourselves as Muslims, we tend to look down upon. And this is actually from shaitan. 
Is that it? Is that all you did? Is that all you gave? Is that all you could do? This is from shaitan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says in the authentic hadith, never belittle any act of good. Don't belittle it. Don't let shaitan fool you and convince you that is that it. No, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is never belittle any act of good. If there's any good that you can do, no matter what it is, do it. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says in the Quran, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Imagine Allah Azza wa Jal says, anyone who does an atom's weight of good. What is an atom? How insignificant is an atom to any human being? Something you can't even see with your own eyes. But Allah Azza wa Jal says, anyone who does an atom's weight of good, he shall verily see it on the day of resurrection. So my brothers and sisters, there are numerous ways of doing good. Jump on them. Take every single opportunity that you can. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, even meeting your brother with a cheerful face, meeting someone with a smile on your face, that's a sadaqah, that's an act of charity. That's, that's, that's a means that Allah Azza wa Jal can reward you with good. Anything. Wallah, it doesn't have to be dramatic. You know, sometimes we think that, look, if I can't give $10,000 in charity, well, therefore I shouldn't give any charity whatsoever. Why? How do you know? How do you know by Allah that one good deed, that one good deed could be the difference, could be the difference between Jannah and Jahannam. That one good deed. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that Allah loves the small action that's consistent. Allah loves this more than the large action, but it was a one-off. No, that consistency, even if it's small, Allah Azza wa Jal, He loves it. Any act of good, do it. Don't waste time. Wallah, my brothers, this is shaitan at his absolute best when he makes you feel insignificant, that whatever good you are going to do, that really in the scheme of things, what's it going to really change? No, is it good? Yes, then do it. Do it. Don't worry about how and where and why and really is it going to change anything. That's Allah's job. Your job and my job is that if Allah presents me with a situation, with an opportunity where I can contribute something, contribute something. Imagine the Prophet Wasallam in the authentic hadith, he says there was a man running in Jannah. A man was running and he was enjoying his paradise. And guess what made him enter? He saw that a branch from a tree was coming out and that it was in the way of the Muslims. Yani it was in the way of the walkway. So the man decided, he said to himself, I can see that this branch has become an inconvenience. It's become a nuisance for the Muslims. So I shall remove it to make things easier for the Muslims. That was the very action that made this man run around in his Jannah and enjoy his Jannah. From What, what did he do? Wallah, in the scheme of things, he removed a branch. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the good and the bad deeds of my ummah was presented to me. He said, and I found that removing a harmful object from the road was put in their good deeds. Something as little as this. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the authentic narration, you know, he calls upon the Muslim women and he says, Oh Muslim women, Oh Muslim women, don't belittle any act of good. Even if it's giving your neighbor the hoof, and imagine the foot of an animal, what value does that have? But to give that as a gift to your neighbor is an act of good. And this is Islam that a believer should be the one who does good wherever he is, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the vibe. If you see an opportunity to do good, jump on it because by Allah, you don't know what may come out of this. Think of it as a seed that you planted into the earth. You don't know what's going to come out of it. We do what we do for Allah's pleasure and then we see whatever Allah wants to do with it. An atom's weight, an atom's weight, you shall see its reward on the day of judgment. You know, the one of the names of the day of judgment is, it's called the day of regret. Why? Why is it the day of regret? Because it is on that day, 
But of course, then it's too late. It's too late for us to come back. It is on that day we will then realize the weight, the amount, the scale, the proportion of things that we deemed as insignificant. To say subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, words, words that are, they, you know, they're very light on the tongue. But you look at your life and you think, man, I'm a sinner. I have this haram and that haram and I haven't been to the masjid and I don't know how long and I can, you know, I'm in so much darkness. What's a word going to do for me? Imagine a tree in paradise because of a subhanallah, a tree. In the famous hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Kalimatan khafifatan ala lisan. He says, you know, there are two words, they're very light, very light on the tongue, meaning that they flow. They flow off the tongue easily. Kalimatan khafifatan ala lisan. Thaqilatan, but they're heavy, they're mighty, they have so much weight. In the, in the scales of Allah Azza wa Jal, they're so heavy. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim Ways of doing good. Wallah, don't belittle any opportunity. You know, imagine, imagine, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he narrates to us, you know, sometimes you think I'm such a sinner, what good can I possibly do? A story was narrated that a woman from Banu Israel who was a prostitute, Imagine this was the woman's occupation, right? The worst of sins, one of the worst of sins, things that are unimaginable, right? This woman did this for a living. And this was, this was her job. That a prostitute was walking and that she seen a dog that was thirsty. Again, now this is shaitan. This is how shaitan works. In the scheme of things, really, what is she going to do? And look, subhanAllah, yani, from a Muslim's perspective, it's a dog, a dog that is najis. And it's not like, wallah, it was a beautiful, colorful parrot that touched her heart. Or, no, 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 it was, it was a stray dog, no owner. But this woman, she was able to get to the well, water well and drink and that she seen the thirst in the eyes of this dog and that this dog couldn't get to it. So something moved her in her heart. So she did an act of good. She brought some water to the thirsty dog and she allowed the dog to drink. The Prophet Sallallahu says that Allah Azza wa Jal entered her into paradise because of this one good deed that she did. And this is Islam. Don't belittle any act of good. Any opportunity you get, jump on it. Anything, if it's goodness, be the first one there. Don't be fooled. Don't try to be the boxer that only throws the heavyweight punches, the knockout punches. No, there's multiple jabs in between, right? And you wait for that moment. You wait for that moment. Any good that you can do. Inshallah, I will end with this one hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he's describing the day of judgment. And, 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 and this is what's amazing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaking about the day of judgment, the hardest day in all of our lives. And he describes, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, every one of you will stand in front of Allah and speak to Allah directly, and there shall be no interpreter between you and Allah. So right away you, you sense the tone, you sense the severity of the hadith. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he continues on to say, he says, and then you would look to your right, and all that you will see is the deeds that you did. And then you will look to your left and all you will see are the deeds that you brought forward. And then you will look in front of you and you shall see Jahannam, the fire of hell burning in front of you. What a description. So you think, you know, you think Allahu Akbar, how can I save myself from this? 
So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, so save yourself from Jahannam, even if it's by giving half a date in charity. Half a date. Imagine now I'm standing, I'm gonna be speaking to Allah. I've got Jahannam in front of me. I've got my deeds to my right and to my left and people are scared and people are petrified. And this is the scariest day of my life. And, 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 and this is the moment of no return. And now the prophet is advising me. See how shaitan is telling you, brother, if it's not Hajj, if it's not a million dollars in charity, if you're not gonna give up a limb, you know, in, in, no, 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 this is, this is shaitan belittling anything that you do. Is that it? Is that all you could do? Is that all you could say? Is that all that you could give? And imagine you're in this situation. No, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, so save yourself. Save yourself from this calamity, from this musibah. Even if by you giving half a seed, half a date in charity. And this is Islam. That any good that you do, you will find it on the Day of Judgment. And today you are alive. You a golden opportunity to make the most of it. Don't waste my brothers and sisters. Don't waste your time. Any goodness, Allah, any amal khair, anything, anything, no matter how insignificant it seems to you, it brings the pleasure of Allah. نسأل الله عز وجل أن يغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد